What's up subscribers and subscribers to be? Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, thanks for visiting for the first time. Today we got some gassed up economics for you guys and we're gonna be talking about the difference between stocks, ETFs, and mutual funds. If you didn't already know, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds. But like I said, we'll be talking to you guys about mutual funds, stocks, and ETFs. This video is gonna be brief. I'm gonna be going over some of the basic concepts of each of these. Starting off with mutual funds, there's typically two types. You have passive and active. As the name suggests, passive mutual funds don't really require that much energy. Active mutual funds, on the other hand, do. For the most part, all a mutual fund is, is you trusting another company to invest your money for you. Whatever company you choose or broker you choose to invest your money, they're gonna pick from a pool of investments. And depending on how they do that, is gonna determine whether or not it's passive or active. If it's passive, as I said earlier, passive mutual funds don't really require much energy. What I mean by that is when you have a passive mutual fund, the broker or manager of that mutual fund or manager of your money, they're not really gonna do much with it. They're gonna stick your money into a certain group of stocks, a certain group of companies, and they're gonna leave it there. And they're gonna charge you a small rate for doing so. When you're looking at active mutual funds, it's the exact same thing. Your funds manager or broker is still gonna be putting your money into a group of stocks. But when it's an active mutual fund, they're gonna be trading within that list of stocks. If they see something shoot up and they feel like they can cash out on it, they're gonna do that. If they see something going down and they feel like you should sell it, they're gonna do that. But it's gonna be managed fully by the broker and you're gonna pay them a higher percentage for managing that active mutual fund. Mutual funds are great for somebody who's retiring or just have no idea what they want to do in the stock market because you can literally put your money in someone else's hands and they can do everything for you. You can literally sit around and smoke all day. And still make money. When you're looking at ETFs or exchange traded funds, they're really similar to mutual funds. But instead of a broker in charge of it, you're in charge of it yourself. You can trade ETFs just like you're trading stocks. For the most part, it's passive because once you purchase an ETF, your ETF can um, contain anywhere from a few to thousands of companies. And those companies, for the most part, aren't going to change. So you can buy those ETFs and leave it there. Um, one benefit to ETFs over mutual funds is that you can do this without paying a broker's price. As a matter of fact, an ETF is almost the exact same as a passive mutual fund without a broker. You can, to an extent, become active with ETFs if you want to. You can buy more or sell a particular type of ETF whenever you want it to. But being that they're grouped together, I would still consider them, for the most part, being um, passive because for the most part, you're gonna end up buying them all together and holding those particular stocks over time. The third option, which you guys will hear me talk about the most on this channel is stocks. Um, stocks can be either passive or active, depending on how you choose to be as an investor. You're gonna purchase individual stocks and just leave them there to be over time without touching them or without checking on them any, or anything that can definitely be passive. If you're like me, if you go back and you're checking on it all the time, you're more active. And definitely if you're a day trader, you're super, super active when it comes to stocks. When you're managing your own stock portfolio, which is what I prefer, you have less fees being taken out compared to ETFs and mutual funds, which you're buying into a company who's doing something for you. And also with stocks, if you see a certain surge in one area or one company that you would particularly like to purchase more of or get rid of, you can do that. Whereas that's not really feasible with mutual funds or ETFs. Another advantage that I can see for um, ETFs and stocks over mutual funds is when you can purchase. Mutual funds can't be purchased until after hours. What I mean by after hours is when the stock market is closed. Basically being that the broker controls the funds, once the funds stop at a steady price, the brokers then sell those funds or sell those fund groupings to um, investors. That's kind of how mutual funds work. When you're looking at ETFs and stocks, they can be purchased during the trading hours. And depending on which company you're using, like I'm personally using Robinhood, I can purchase stocks and ETFs after hours as well because of the program that I have with them. Based on what we've been through in the video, all in all, it's going to differ person to person, but this is kind of what I recommend. If you're new to stocks and you absolutely have no idea 
where to begin or what companies to invest in, none whatsoever, I would suggest going with mutual funds. It's your choice of whether or not you want it to be active or passive. You can determine that by looking at how much you want to pay in fees and also the benefits of being active or passive. Like I said earlier, if you're active, you have a chance of making more money due to your broker watching your account steadily and making moves to ensure more money, hopefully, but you're gonna pay a bit more for that. Um, if you just don't know at all and you still wanna save that money, you can go with passive mutual funds. That way you can invest in a few companies to hedge any risk of one company going down and you're not paying that much in fees. The only downside is, is that you can't purchase those mutual funds until after hours. If you're looking to invest passively, that shouldn't matter much. And like I said, this is probably best for beginners. If you kind of know what stocks you want to choose, you kind of have a little bit more experience or you know at least what direction you want to go in, I would recommend using ETFs. They're somewhat passive. You can purchase them any time of day depending on what kind of account you have. And I would recommend them for all levels of investors, whether it's beginning to moderate to advanced levels. Because if you're looking at passive income, that's a good way to just set something aside and just reap the benefits from it over time. Stocks I would recommend more so for moderate or advanced investors. I myself started off as a beginner with stocks and I was able to learn a lot from doing so. But if you're purchasing individual stocks, it's best to know a lot about the companies that you're purchasing. Do your research. If you're able to do that research or if you have the time to do that, I would definitely suggest going into stocks. Um, you can purchase them anytime you want to. There's less of an overhead fee. And once you get pretty decent at doing it, it's going to be the avenue that will probably make you the most money. As always, thank you guys for watching the video. As a gift from me to you, there's a link in the description for the Robinhood app. If you sign up using my link, you'll get one free stock. You can use this app to purchase different ETFs, different stocks. You can't use it to purchase mutual funds, but I will have some other links in the description where you can buy mutual funds. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching the video and have a great day. How about the bag? Go get the money. Count that cad and back to the money. Put that on repeat. Go get the bag. Go get the bag. And now we coming. Yeah. If you really bought your money, put a dollar in the app. If you really bought your hustle, put a dollar in the app. You ain't taking else for nothing. Put a dollar in the app. You ain't got no hustle muscle. Get the fuck up out of hell.